All right, what is going on, YouTube? Today we're going to play some Five Color Shadow, no Metamorphos. Didn't go as well as I wanted it to, the previous league did, but we're going to jump back in and try this. Like We played, we played three close matches. We just went... 120 points. We played three close matches. Like each one of these, I feel like we were right in it until the end. But I, I played um, Nerd Rage Gaming. The Joe Set used to publicize that a lot. Um, we've been paired. Sweet. So now we have a much better setup against humans. Like, I feel much better with these Radiant Flames. So, back to Ichopa. The Hostage Shaker comes in against, in fair matchups, and it comes in against, like, Lantern, Tron. I don't recognize the name. Sand Sweet. We get Turn 1 Delirium. This right here is just absolutely sick. The fact that you can do this for free is just insane. Like, this right here is a is Opt. But it's free. Which, like, yeah, you do have to have the bobble and the street wraith in your opening hand and a fetch land. So, like, it doesn't come together that often. But, man, when it does, it's just awesome. Uh, we don't want her. She's a bit too expensive. Probably going to play against a control deck and then, like, hate myself. Death Shadow. Okay, so... This I might as well Inquisition. We just don't want to get caught with our pants down just in case we're playing burn. All right, Affinity's kind of the same thing. So what do they do? They put a card on the bottom. I have one removal spell. I think I'm just going to take Signal Pest. This hand's pretty anemic. Because, like, I don't have to kill anything from there. This makes it so that, like, Signal Pest is a must-kill card. These cards, none of these cards are must-kill at all. I would like to hit a land so that I can just traverse for a shadow and then play my other shadow. So Ornithopter, Memnite, Search. Okay, so you got just whatever card they drew, which they put on the bottom. All right, so let's traverse for Death Shadow. We're going to get a Blood Crypt here because the odds of um, the odds of Stubborn Denial mattering in this game are pretty low. And we just want we want to be able to just team or battle rage to end it. Then next turn, we can either push, play Death Shadow, or we can Thought Seize, play Death Shadow to grow it. So we're in a good spot here. Affinity can be kind of a tough matchup before sideboarding. That's annoying. This is going to have to make us think. I hate playing against this card. Okay. So I can attack. I can go Thought Seize them and then attack and see what they do with this and push this. The problem is they're going to like... So let me, if I go Thought Seize Attack, see what they do. If they just block and chump, then I'm probably just going to play another Death Shadow. If they block and go all in on this Death Shadow, then I'll push it. But I think I want to start off with Thought Seize to make them make a move. This probably whiffs, but it's just going to deal some damage to me. If we hit something, it's just gravy. So now I'm going to attack. And then wait for them to make a move. Alright, they don't make a move. So one, two, three, four. Put it all in here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so don't see that away my opponent kills me next turn. So I think, because this block's here, yeah, they can't kill me next turn, so I'm going to play another Death Shadow. 
make it diff- more difficult for them to attack me. And I can deal, like, if my opponent, if I, I'll block one that's on the ground, and my opponent kind of has to go all in. Okay, welding job. That's annoying. Block. One, two, three, four, five. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. So that's a block. If I block here, they probably just go sack, 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 make this four. Alternatively, I can just wait. It's tough. Bear was 16. Battle Rage doesn't do it. I can block and go to 8. But then, like, these things, this. Ravager. So I can at least make this Ravager do something to take chump blockers out of my way. Like I'm basically trading this Death Shadow for these two cards and like this. Or you can just regenerate it. You can just go like one, two, and then regenerate it. So I'm basically trading my Death Shadow for three cards. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay. He might just go eat, eat, regenerate this to keep this a 4 4, which is like pretty bad for the home team. Okay, so he just trades. Or he just trades three for this. Oh, yeah, because of Shadow. God, it's been so long since I played Death Shadow, but I forgot how it worked. <laughs> and we just kill him. Oh my god, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to work today because now I can get these plans in. So yeah, push that, crack him for 16. Because we hit the fetch land. Dude, sometimes you just luck sack into some wins, you know? Like you didn't even think about it. You just luck sack into it. That's just how we drew it up. It is better to be lucky than good. And don't let anybody else tell you differently. Fun with state base. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you're right. There are so many. I was at an SCG one time, and I they, my opponent did that to me, and I was just like, okay, resolves, damage resolves, and then like they're like, your death shadow's dead. I was like, no, it's not, and you just kill them on the crack bat. So I literally could see bringing in all of these cards. Can I actually do that? Probably not. Best unintentional trap ever. You're right. So I can see bringing all of these in. Where are they? And my ancient grudges are over here in my team of battle rage. And let me find my land. Where are you, land? There it is. Okay. I like to cut all of these. I like to cut two of these because I like to keep delirium. And then I usually like to cut most of my thought seizes, if not all of them. And then I like to cut my stubs. 
And then if I'm bringing this and land in, I'll get run to one of these. I want to keep my double, because like, Breeding Pool, Blood Crypt, Godless Shrine allows you to cast all your spells. You never want to cut the Breeding Pool. So now that we see this, I'm going to bring in another Thought Seize. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't really feel bad for my opponent if, you know, they don't know the rules and I do. This is another thing that I don't really like is, like, you know, we got a little bit of an anti. But these cards are going to be so good that, like, like, each one of these are so good that probably if I draw them, it's even if I draw them in conjunction, it's probably fine. So it is, this is pretty clunky, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I think we're going to keep it. That's weird. We literally, we literally comfortably brought in 12 cards in our sideboard, and we're okay with it. Whether right or not is up to debate, but, like, I didn't feel bad cutting any of those cards or bringing these cards in. I didn't feel like I was stretching. It was all just fine. The hostage taker might be a little bit over the top, but you're going to be able to, like, if sometimes this game divulges to where, like, there's this really weird, like, race situation where you have a bunch of Lingering Souls tokens, they have, like, an etched champion with, like, a cranial, you know, or, like, you know, there's sometimes weird things happen where it's just nice to get a plating off the board. Or ship this quick. I don't I don't really like Collective Brutality there, expands. It does not kill a lot of things. Uh, I pull Mulligan to five. I'm going to keep this hand. Like, Collective Brutality doesn't kill enough things and it's sorcery speed at two mana. It's like a it's like a wicked... We're going to put this on top because it's a, it's a redraw and it helps Delirium. Um, it's like the same thing as... One, two, three... It's like, um, imagine if Abrupt Decay couldn't hit Cranial Plating. I think we want that land. So I'm going to keep it on top. Then we're going Tap Land USA here. Like, brutality, if Brutality was an instant, I'd like it a lot. But I just don't think it does enough. So I'm assuming that's what they drew. So they must have some, like, some things that cost mana in their hand. God, if I could pulse both of these Ornithopters... I'd be pretty excited. Okay, so this goes and gets Blood Crypt. This gets Breeding Pool. That's pretty good. So this will go get Breeding Pool. And then we'll, look, we'll push something if we have to. We're going to have to think here. We're going to have to do some serious thinking with... And our, well, I guess they have metal craft, so never mind. I don't have to do anything. I think I'm just going to pulse both of these ornithopters next turn. Like, it feels kind of mopey, but it basically, like, it's kind of a three for one. Because, like, you get rid of both these ornithopters and you shut this off. We'd have to be worried about, like, stubborn denial or spell pierce, but, like, I'm just going to make him show it to me. Yeah, we just have like a now. Now I'm just gonna radiant flames because the pulse is hits more things or hits like cranial plating. Uh, that was red, green, black. Okay. All right, I'm gonna just. We're never casting that, but whatever. We're gonna get our we're gonna get a clock on the foot on the battlefield. Then I might I might just like insult the injury. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, I mean I feel like there's no need for me to hostage take her this. I would kinda it would kinda suck if my opponent had like a whip flare, but they would need to do two mana to do that. I could just be mana efficient and hostage take her this. It feels kind of mopey though. It puts two. Whatever. It's mana efficient and puts two power on the battlefield. Like, I'm not excited about this, but it also just cuts off his lands. Mm. 
There's no way. They probably have another Mox. Yeah, that would make sense. Collective's okay. Like, Brutality's, oh, it's marginal. My opponent well played. All right, well. I mean, we beat the tar out of somebody that mulligan to five, which achievement unlocked. I still think it was right to put the hostage taker down because we had the maelstrom pulse and we can like we could either play lingering souls and get two power for two mana or we can get two power for four mana which like we might as well just use it all right thirty two viewers I hope everyone's having a good day you guys my name's Dylan Hubby you guys went under my stream I'm an associated with the card holder network here we saw them give us cards which took forever Misa MGG, hey. Um, I appreciate y'all for hanging out. If you guys like what you see, definitely hit the follow button. Uh, I'm working on getting my stream a little more regular. And work has just been insane lately. Like, I'm going to finish streaming. Probably going to set my deck after this stream, to tell you the truth. And then I'm going to have to work. I'm looking to get a good stream on Saturday. I'm going to work in the morning on Saturday, but I'd like to have a good midday stream. With I'm thinking this five-color shadow deck is where I'm going to end up. Happy feet. God, we got the no land heater. How sick is this hand? 17 looks at three cards. Three cards at a land. We can traverse for another land if we need to. We got Inquisition. I'm gonna. I really hate. Like, this hand's got everything. We get three looks at a land. If any one of these cards was a land, you'd keep it. In a heartbeat. Though this is almost a mulligan because we don't have lands. That just might not be right, but it's just such a good, such a good hand. It's your money, but I would keep it. Yeah. If somebody told me they wanted to mulligan that hand, I would be fine. I'd be like, okay. You know, let's do whatever. Like, I'm not going to fault you for that. If we find one land in these three draws, then we're good. I don't know the math, to tell you the truth. Like, I don't know what the odds are there. All right. Oh, for 1. All right, we got it. Um, we're not going to fetch yet. We're going to cycle again. I would assume this is like a storm deck. Okay, so this gets Overgrown Tomb, Watery Grave. This is like a blue-red control deck. This hand's a little sketchy because we're down to such low life already. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to be results-oriented, the, the question is, is that right? And I would understand if somebody told me that wasn't right. Okay, so we're playing against the old Nikolic Jeskai deck. So we're taking... We're taking Spell Snare. And we're going to hope he never gets uh, the old Torrential Deer Hulk, because that's going to kill us. And we're going to jam this Dharma Wave down his throat. I've played against Ben. ben Ben's a really good player. He plays down in my local shop. When I, when I go, it's not really like super local for me. All right, we don't need any more of these. I'm not going to do this right now. That is a Liliana, so. Um, do I want to get a Blood Crypt? The problem is, I don't want to get burned out. So this is probably going to get a Swamp, which sucks, because it's just going to, like, turn on all of his paths. But he did go bottom-bottom. So. Hashtag never punished. Would you kept the hand, or would you mulligan that? On the draw, unknown opponent. You got a removal spell, a discard, a way to enable your goif, or your, your way to enable death shadow, and a threat. And a guaranteed second land, if you hit the first one. So they drew that. They went, they kept one card on top. Alright, so we're going to play our Liliana before combat, because, geez. We're going to play Liliana before combat. We're at a virtual five now, so we're really not looking to take very much damage. Play one basic in this five color list. 
probably gonna ditch this. Which card? The Abrupt Decay doesn't do anything. So we're gonna get rid of Decay. Yeah, Decay's not gonna do anything. And this land could could rehome Team or Battle Rage Fodder. Okay, they ditch they ditch the Hulk. So makes our Goyf Yidge. It's literally the biggest Tarma Goyf. So Helix me or Helix my Liliana. What are you what are you doing? That's scary. Maybe fetch. He could just bolt, bolt, kill us, but such is life. I'd love to draw a stubborn denial. It's odd he did that in my end step. He's probably like, I don't know if I want to do it. And then he's like, I don't want to get. Okay. All right. So now, do we do nothing with Liliana? Because, or do we ditch this fatal push and look to kill them before they colonize us? But I think that's what we do. So let's go up. Now, had I had I not seen this torrential gear hulk, I would have cast this traverse before taking my Liliana because of spell color. But this is Nikolic's deck. This isn't a. Uh, this isn't a uh, whatever it is. A spell caller deck. Get me a death shadow. So I will play my polluted delta. No way. All right, bolt me. All right. This guy is just knocking the top. He's got three, he got seven draws to kill me in the normal Nicolich Jeskai deck. That doesn't look like it was one of them. One to one. Yeah, that was, that was the game plan. I just had to determine, like, I'm by doing that, I'm committing to killing them, taking the most aggressive route before this colonnade gets going, ditching whatever this is. Please draw, draw cryptic. Oh, all right. Oh, he tapped my dude. Okay, all right. So I'll ditch this. And then I'm just going to replay the Liliana and do nothing with it. Because that Fever Battle Rage is the chance. Playing Popper, nice. What is this? A Johnny? <sighs> Gross. Well, you know, they hit it. That happens. It happens to the best of us. So I want this. I want these. I want this. And then these are a maybe. I don't want these. I kind of want my decays. Because he is going to have Detention Sphere and Search for Escanta. I like ditching a couple Inquisitions because oftentimes Collective Brutality can be better post-board because they've got more Cryptics and such. Yeah, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave a decay, uh, some number of decays in. I don't really like having any answers to Celestial. Like, I really don't like having any removal in my deck after sideboard, because by the time that he's... Like, I should never give him the opportunity to fire up a Celestial Comp, because I'm just dead if that happens. So I could see going something like this. I want to leave two of these in, because I can always discard it to Collective Brutality for some value. So let's go like this. 
And where is my blood crypt? Sort by converted mana cost. Do I want to cut another Inquisition? I like I want two decays because it's just going to be so good when you draw it. What I want to know is if I want to put trade this for this. I don't really want push. I just got Lingering Souls, and like Lingering Souls is the best way to deal with Colonnade. It's proactive. I hate being reactive. I don't want like I want to dictate the pace of the game. Man, yeah, I think. He's got, we're gonna have, I wanna be able to hit Verdict. So I think we're gonna go like this. Like Supreme Verdict is where this, Supreme Verdict is where this is, Encrypted Command is where this game's gonna be like one lost. I wanna keep this. It's good, not great. Lingering Soul is good. That first Abrupt Decay is going to be good. And I'm going to be pretty aggressive with this Stubborn Denial. Ooh. They're... Oh, they... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll probably stub a cantrip, to be honest. While I'm looking at five. That's rough. Because this finds Breeding Pool... The problem is, is that TBR is not a threat on its own. TBR is like A plus B, and I don't want A plus B. I'm going to leave this uncracked because I would like to just, even though it's marginal, I want to find another land. Um, TBR is A plus B. And, okay, that's good. So let's go like this. I don't want to put A plus B against, against a deck full of removal spells. Okay, so what do they do? They put a card on top. I'm just going to get this Secure the Waste off the board. This card is going to be like... It's going to be the one that wins the game if he ever wades through all my stuff, which he's got to hand to Ken. I really need to get to that third land drop for Lingering Souls. Yeah, t like... Like, whatever it is. Verdict... Um, wow, he kept a card on top. And it wasn't a land. What did he keep... How could you keep a card on top and have it not be a land? Okay. So, Overgrown Tomb, Breeding Pool. I like, I'm going to get double green because instead of like maybe two white sources, because being able to um, traverse for Tarmogoyf is like the best way to deal best creature in these matchup. No, turn off auto yields. Turn off auto yields. We just like F6 so hard. And I'm gonna sit here and what do I want to do? I'm gonna leave up stub because I really want to, if he draws a land, let's say he's drawn a cantrip or a surge, I really want to get, get it out of there. It's not mana efficient, but You just don't want TBR in any fair matchup, really. Because if you TBR and they kill your creature, then game's over. So, anybody in the chat, do you guys have fun watching? Because it's copyright free. That's why. On the draw, there's an argument to having one more to switching these. No, I don't like TBR. I don't like TBR against any deck that plays Fatal Push. Because you just cannot afford to have a card that does not impact, that does not, like, impact the board against that deck. I think I'm going to cut one of these, bring one of these in on the draw. Just have another quick answer, another turn one answer. I, I, have, I actually have it on mute. No, I, I can't even hear it. No, 
I'm gonna shoot this. Hey, Six Sigma. Oh, we got it on the wrong one. Hang on. Hang on. Man, why? None of my stuff is uploading. I tried it twice. I'm gonna mulligan my hand, by the way. This, if, we, if this is a green land, I'd keep it. Yeah, this hand's good. It's, I mean, it's good, not great, but. There we go. Now we should be, now we should have the five color one up there. All right, I'm gonna keep this, put this on the bottom. We don't need no, we don't need no lingering souls no more. We're gonna cycle this street wraith before we fetch to Inquisition. And I might get Overgrown too, which it takes me away from having the blue land, but it is what it is. I'm gonna have six here because he doesn't have any of that stuff. Serum Visions went bottom top. All right, that's brutal. Okay, nice. So now we're playing magic. Overgrown tomb. I'm gonna get water grave in my next land because I'm gonna need another land to cast this anyways. Ooh, swing animus, settle the wreckage. Holy shit. This hand's beatable. I would assume they kept a piece of interact, uh, early game interaction on top of their deck, though. If I had to assume. So I might not run my shadow out there, to tell you the truth. I might just brutality them. Because I'm pretty sure they kept, like, something on top. Well, now I'm just going to jam, because I know I'm using my mana next turn. If we hadn't drawn that land, it would have been interesting. It, it was like, I, I went 0-3, played three really close matches. It will be on YouTube. But I just wasn't happy with like, I don't know how to describe it. The deck felt okay, but it messed up my sideboarding more than anything. All right, we'll, we'll ramp. We should be able to get the cryptic command and the settle of the wreckage, I think. I think his hand's really clunky, and we're going to be able to get it here. Hallowed Fountain, okay. Yeah, we're going to be in good shape next turn. Because this goes get us Lingering Souls. I hate how this comes up so small. I definitely lost matches, lost games, because I've, I've misclicked the lands, being too lazy. So I know four out of the five. And then, like, next turn, we'll go Collective Brutality. We can go Collective Brutality, Thoughtseize, and have Stub, and just take, like, probably take all three of those cards, because they probably tried Cryptic. We Stub, trade with that. Yeah, they're, they're definitely cryptic. You're not going to shock there to not cryptic command. All right, so let's... Do I want to gain life? I don't think... Well, am I realistically going to be able to cast all of these Lingering Souls? Probably not, and I'm going to look... I don't want to be at seven, so I think we're going to escalate with two modes here. And we're gonna just gain two life, ditch the lingering souls. Oh no. 
Because it just keeps us at nine. And there's no need to get too aggressive here. It also just takes a turn off the clock. Like... How did it mess up the board? I feel like you should have been... No, because you messed up the board because you feel like you can't take out very many cards because you need the... Um, you need to keep the metamorphoses in to have the deck work. And that's what I mean by messing up the board. Alright, sweet cryptics. We stub. This resolves. Now we take Revelation. Because I'm not going to be able to kill him fast enough. Though I could just take Settle, and then Thought sees the Revelation, and then he's got to naturally... He can go Snap Serum. We just don't have the clock to, to get rid of this. I don't think there is a way, really, because you, like... The Manamorphos, like, you should put those in the deck in order to make sure that you can, um, you put the Manamorphoses in the deck. Now, hang on, let me think about it. This is a tough, so I can take Settle, then I can Thought Seize the Rev, and then he has to naturally hit two land drops besides going Snapcaster Mage, because Snap, because Torrential Gear Hulk is going to be tough to play around. But I think I have to go take Settle, Thought Seize the Rev. Because now we attack for two. Then next turn we threaten to attack for six. Oh my gosh! Oh! That hurts so bad. Oh, that was so bad. That was such a stab in the... Just, All right, um... Logic Knot, Snapcaster Mage. How does he get out of this? He finds cheap interaction and he snaps it back. I think we're going to take the Snapcaster. If he draws two lands to get up this Torrential Gear Hulk, then he's probably going to lose. Okay. And now it's a race against time. Alright, I'm going to cast that. I'm going to... Actually, I don't even think I want to cast this Inquisition. Right? I should wait to cast the Inquisition if he gets Torrential Gear Hulk mana up. Because then he has to, like, I can get it without this Torrential Gear Hulk coming down and bringing it back. Because if I Inquisition it now, then he can just Gear Hulk it back next turn if I want to cast something. So I should wait until he has mana. Alright, he missed. Which means he drew a spell. Which isn't great for the home team. All right, do I... I don't think I want to even... Because, like... Thought sees this logic knot. I think we're just going to pass. I don't know what... Come on. Upkeep... All right. (sighs) 
Okay, so now we make it so there's two problems for him. Okay, so we drew a Snapcaster. Which is kind of annoying because he paths this. We take the Logic Knot. And then it's Tarmogoyf against Snapcaster and Torrential Gear Hulk. So now we cast Goyf. He probably has to path the Spirit. Yeah. And now we just hope that he misses on this Hulk. This Hulk's gonna mess us up. Oh, God. Oh, that sucks so bad. We would have been able to kill it. All right, now we just gotta wait. Hopefully he gets frisky with this Gear Hulk. That's the only, that's like our out at the moment. Oh, he's just leaving it, okay. Top 10 anime betrayals. What is that? <clears throat> All right, so we're going to decay this. Because I'm going to draw two cards next turn. I want to have the mana available. So let's see what they're drawing. I'm drawing a Lightning Helix. Which is really bad. Because Lightning Helix means that I'm going to have to block this Torrential Gear Hulk. If I cast Tarmogoyf, he logic knots it. I block. The problem with that is it makes it so that. God, this sucks. Because I, I don't have double green. I can't go like Tarmogoyf and Traverse. So maybe I just have to play Lingering Souls. Block. The Gear Hulk. He goes Gear Hulk Logic Knot. Though if I go like this, he can only he can't Gear Hulk Logic Knot me out of it because the Tarmogoyf. Yeah, he can't Gear Hulk Logic Knot me because he has to use all of his mana. And it taps him out. And then he's still dead through this. So yeah, we go like this. And now we pass. My opponent flashes it in here. We double block it. Because 10, he can't even kill us through it. He easily could have another lightning bolt, though. Like, we could be super dead. But such is life. And then we're definitely just sending it with both of our creatures. Yeah, we just double block.
Specs path live. It's gonna have like a path. That makes sense. Double lightning helix also makes sense. Come on, lightning helix. He's got another lightning helix. Let's go. Yeah, buddy. Get that Jess guy bullshit out of my face. God, that feels good. Yeah, you can't do. Yeah, no, I think. Oh, he can't. He can't even delve the cards. He can't. How does it read? I didn't know that because I thought he could still delve cards as part of the count as part of the cost. Because you flash it back for its cost, but you can't do its Sphinx's revelation. Yeah, didn't know that. You learn something every day. Peter. This ain't wicked. I'm gonna Thought Seize first. Actually, no, I'm gonna Inquisition first because if I hit a land, then I can just Thought Seize Death Shadow. I thought the Delve was what messed me up. Without paying its cost. That's the old RTFC moment. Which, like, I don't know many of these. You know, this is why, like, whenever I whenever I play at a... Oh. Okay, so we can deal with the Flame Blade Adept. We can deal with this. We're just going to take the Goblin Lore. Whenever I play at a, um, like, a competitive tournament... So, Manamorphos. You can't fix Manamorphos because... The deck needs... We're back to finishing my thought. Let me just finish my one thought. Like, I would not have known in that situation if I had any doubt, like... Because I wasn't 100% sure. I should have just asked the judge. There. You should always just ask a judge whenever you have any questions. So we really want to see a land. It's got another flame by the deck, which is kind of annoying. But we know that at least... I guess you can make this flame by the deck huge. Okay, there's a land, which is still a little sad. So I can just go Thought Seize. Yeah, I'm just going to Thought Seize. It's not a bad draw, actually. Take that. Take the Duder. You're now one? Yeah. That's good, dude. That just gives you an advantage. Watch this thing grow. Is there no reason? I am going to have to Thought Seize that Lightning Bolt. But he probably just goes Faithless Looting and then into the uh, whatever the card is. Because we know he has a Flame Blade Adept. I always, like, I always lead, lead, you know, the judges' calls, I feel like, whenever I go to a tournament. Because I don't know anything when it comes to calling judges. Like, I'll admit that. Like, I don't, I'm not very good at the rules, so I always ask. Ditch Bolt. Bolt looting. Or bolt stomping ground. Alright, we'll get this thing out. So we know that he's got another flame blade adept. There's an argument to just taking a shot from there, but this deck can be super explosive that I don't want to you know, I can go to I can go to eleven and play Shadow if I want. Or I can go like Thoughts he's put you know, I just don't want to I wanna survive like we played against this deck. Oh, there's a hollow one, okay. Can't get rid of that. So now I gotta take two. Get the flame blade adept. And play ourselves a cute little two-two. Hopefully, this doesn't get a lightning bolted. Goblin lore. If this turns side, so he's got another one. That's gotta be what this means. Because you ain't supposed to race a Death Shadow. It could be Nasty Germasty. Wow, that's 
This guy's bold. I might as well take a look here. Because if, if I can take it, what could it be? It could be another Goblin Lore. It could be a Burning Inquiry. Because if I could take it, it's worth it because it makes these Faithless Lootings a lot worse. Okay, it's a land. Okay, so... I can't two turn. I can't two turn them because if I go fetch, I have to fetch, which makes a seven, which makes this thirteen. So there's no point in fetching. What is, what is uh, IPG and MTR? So I can just do this and die to lightning bolt. Which like I'm kind of okay with. We've already he's already seen one bolt. He gets a lot of looks at lightning bolt though. How do I lose? He finds bolt. That's like how I lose. So I think I'm just gonna like play defense. Find hopefully find a team or battle rage. Magic terminals. Okay. No, that's why I always ask. Like I'm not very good at rules. I'm always like I'm always gonna ask. So we just mountain, okay. So this could be another hollow one. Yeah, that's that's rough. Good thing we didn't attack. Not gonna fetch. That's a pretty good draw. Fetch shock, fetch basic. We have our basic left in our deck. I think we're just going to, again, play it slowly. He doesn't have any more Faithless Lootings, and he's living off the top. Going to just push that now. So do I want to wait? Do I want to set up? Can I set up some kind of like block push dismember? Or is it worth just using my mana? What can I draw? I think I just want to use my mana. Do I want to fetch? Probably. Because like, then what do I get? This means I can't take any damage off of a dismember. I guess I can go to four. Yeah, so I can take I can dismember for one Phyrexian and still play around Lightning Bolt. Alright, so now am I getting in there? Seven. I lose the lightning bolt if I attack. But I think I think we're so far ahead that I can sit here. It just traverse for Death Shadow, play Death Shadow, and pass. And then start attacking with one Death Shadow while holding up a full retail dismember on the other one. I think that I can just chill out. I think we're far enough ahead. This day he seems out of gas. That we can just play the slow roll here. Yeah. Sometimes you can just, like, if somebody asks you, like, how big are the Death Shadows, you can just say, this is my life total. Okay. So I'm going to attack with one, block, full retail the other one. Alternatively, I can attack with both, because it's the same thing. So, I might as well attack with both. Make some chump. And then we dismember this, we hope they don't find another Flame Wake Phoenix or a Bolt. Yeah, I've definitely had some really awkward moments where I've played against a burn player. Just a burn player that was like new. If he doesn't attack, okay, so. Played against a burn player that was new, and I was just like, 
they like I got an instant and a sorcery or I got a sorcery to land in the graveyard and they're like bolt your time wife and I'm just like resolve don't bolt me okay This is another matchup where I don't know how to sideboard. I literally don't know if we're supposed to bring in Lingering Souls. I don't know if I'm supposed to have counter spells. Like I tend to really not like these counter spells in the draw because they can just burning inquiry and do their own thing anyways. So I kind of like want these, and then I want some Lingering Souls when I'm on the draw. Like I can easily see cutting. I can easily just see in like this for this. But then I don't know how long the games are gonna go. Oh, my opponent disconnected, which is bad. Yeah. <coughs> Souls does seem really slow, but, like, does this Stubborn Denial actually do anything on the draw? Like, I get that they're already doing like, I like this. I like the stubs on the play. The Lilianas don't seem good because of Bloodgast. You would play the Grudge just for the ho just for the Hollowed one. The Grudge for the Hollowed one seems loose, but maybe you want Hostage Taker because of that. So you guys are saying board something like this. The grudges do seem kind of nuts because they are, they're actually like good through burning inquiry. And they're an easy discard. Maybe I'd board out grudge on the draw for more counter spells, but I, I can definitely see what you're saying here. Maybe a counter, maybe a miser's counter spell. <laughs> well, it's okay against random discard, right? Because, like, you got to hit it for it to be really good. <coughs> That's all math, right? <coughs> right here. I think this is what we're going to do. I can go with that. I like brutality. I think I like the Hostage Taker, because all their stuff's really big. If I can get Hostage Taker online, it's going to do well. I'm actually going to run to the bathroom while this match starts, considering my opponent's disconnected. Okay. 
All right. Um, I kind of just want to like this hand's good. I want to keep it just because like you know like who knows. All right, hands, hands still good. We just need a threat, we're in good shape. Um, this is gonna get a green stars. My opponent's like, I'm not very good at this burning inquiry thing. All right, uh, I'm gonna lead off on Inquisition. Like we're gonna be able to do enough damage to ourselves most likely. Oh, I should. That was so stupid of me. I knew this deck played Delve cards. And then I sit there and I. Oh my gosh. Ugh, I'm so frustrated with myself. That's all my fault. That's so frustrating. 100% my fault, too. Like, if I lose this game with this Tasker, it's just like. Nothing but me. I was like, I'm going to protect my life total. Yada yada. <clears throat> they were gonna get flame white phoenix. God, that was such a super pun. All right. Well, I mean, like that's probably gonna fix our problems for us. Okay. Let's think. Cracks me for six. Probably eight, because they have another... They've got another thing in their hand. Another another Flame Wake Phoenix. Okay. Crack me for eight. I go to seven. Play a tap land. Go to seven. So if I play it, then I play my Death Shadow next turn. I'm definitely just going to cast this sucker. Yeah. No, I, no, I got to play a tap land. Because we're only at 13. So this is 4, 8, 7. They then crack me to 3. 7, crack me to 3. 10, 20. Yeah, so we're just going to play this. We're just going to play that tapped. No! There's the Blood Guest and the Flame Wing Phoenix. So we're going to go to one next turn if everything works out the way we want it to. Play this and like cross our fingers. Don't have a way to kill this. Don't have a lightning bolt. This probably means they have a lightning bolt. Yeah. <clears throat> and that was all my fault. I tossed that game. I didn't get rid of the Tasker on one. All my fault. All right, so I'm going to bring in... A little bit more, um, I'm bringing some more counter spells on the play. Probably cut this while I'm on the play, and then probably can leave one of these in. Yeah, we'll go like this. Maybe cut a push. Yeah, that was 100, just 100% my fault, which is frustrating. I'm playing all the losses on you. That's fine. I don't like Lily in when they have blood gassed. I'm going to keep this hand. I'm going to leave up Stubborn Denial on one. Like Bobble here. Probably fetch a breeding pool.
No, we don't want that. Hey, Dylan, I've been testing that list. Which list are you talking about, Scott? And I would rather do it like this in case my opponent has two burning inquiries. All right, Rage is good. Stubbing whatever he does here. Skip Delirium. Okay, and we drew a land. <clears throat> so let's... This gets Blood Crypt. Blood Gas, Blood If I take this Goblin Lore... Can I, can I like... The problem is, is if I let him have this, is if I take, let him, if I take this Goblin Lore, then I can't really, like, reliably get my Death Shadow down and have it large enough to win the game for me, if I leave him with his Blood Moon. I'm trying to like find a way to not take his blood moon. Yes, Lore is one without lingering souls and hostage taker on the side. Oh, the one without they all they all had. I think I've played every one of my versions have had lingering souls in them. Yeah. Lore is how they function, but I don't have a reliably a because I have to go fetch shock. And that leaves me with just mountains. Like, I don't have a reliable way to win. You know? If they land this Blood Moon. So I think I have to take... I think I have to be, like, an adult and take Blood Moon and hope they don't just, like, nut. Oh, there's next turn. That sucks. I mean, what am I... Tra am I traversing for a fetch land? So I can get my Death Shadow down? Or am I traversing for, like, a Tarmogoyf? Which is huge. Tarmogoyf is one, two, three, four. Tarmogoyf, because I'll probably delve this away, but they're not going to be able to do it for a while. But the problem is, is like we only reliably can make this Death Shadow a two-two, and like two-two with rage doesn't matter. If I had another fetch land, then. I would consider it more, but... And, like, yeah, we can do random numbers. I think I'm just going to, like, do this. And then... Traverse for a Tarmogoyf. And if he... If he doesn't... If he hits this, it doesn't hit the task. I mean, again, if we get lucky. So he had Bloodgast. So he's got Tassiger and three unknowns. Yeah, we're just going to cast Tom Life. Got a big old Goyf. Nasty Germasty. He's going to be able to delve it to make it a little smaller, but... Mm hmm yeah. But now he's just going to delve. Or at least he should delve away. Because the Goyf, my, the Goyf's only a 4-5 or five on my side. All right. So if I go offer the trade... If he blocks Team or Battle Rage, if he doesn't, then I take six, go to eight. The problem is that I thought C's go to 12, take six, go to six. 
So what, we don't know anything about our opponent's hand. I think I like just attacking first. Then thoughts again. This breeding pool is fucking me up. This is like a free four points, so. Okay, so we hit a moon. Which we feel kind of bad about, but it is what it is. So my opponent's hand's garbage. Doesn't ancient assume they call the hollow ones, but why not push and hope that. Does an ancient grudge seem like a mistake? Oh, they drew a burning inquiry. Ancient grudge doesn't seem great. Like I'm, I'm definitely not gonna, you know. But like, they hit one of our shadows. They hit a land too. Drew a second. We drew. We still have the rage. So what did he get? He, he kept both of his lands. Wow, he kept both of his land. No, he got rid of a foothills. Like I'm not super excited about. Um, I'm not really excited about or these last two. One of them's a black, black league flips. I wasn't excited about Ancient Grudge, but I had a lot of cards to take out. Yeah. Okay, so I think we got him. All right, that's good. So now we can confidently go for it and play another Death Shadow if shit hits the fan. My opponent had to know that I had this because they, they played around it last turn. And then they were just like, whatever, I'm going to hope he doesn't have it. I brought my uh, I bought my elves there, Scott. Picked up a set of elves yesterday. Cost me about 20 bones after shipping. I told my wife, I came home and was like, hey, babe, I bought uh, some Blood Rain Elves. And she was like, well, why'd you buy them? I was like, because of this, they're probably going to be like, you know, if they get unbanned. She's like, well, why didn't you buy more? I was like, oh, that stresses me out. You have six promos waiting? I don't know if they'll unban it this time, but I do think they're gonna unban it eventually. Cause like, oh gosh, six, I'm sorry. So let me go back to the deck here. Like 500 blood for elves. So the problem with Manamorphos is that, so let's say we're playing a matchup here. I automatically have, uh, let me get back to the Manamorphos shadow here. Like, all right, let me just get into my match. The Manamorphos, the problem here is like, where where am I? Right here. Come on. God, Moto, I love you. Is that we get right here. You can't really touch these 11 cards, okay? And it means that like, if I want a bunch of cards to bring in, I can't get rid of these. And it just didn't feel cohesive. Like, well, so... A four less one twin. Nice. Well, the, the Manamorphose was really nice when <coughs> I was playing a combo deck and they didn't give me a target with my Fatal Push or my Abrupt Decay or my Dismember. Or, the, you know, it was just, it was a nice way to turn on Delirium. But it just gave me such a sideboarding problem. Like, I could only, I couldn't take out enough cards. Like, you're basically never cutting, like, you're never really cutting these. You're never cutting these, and you hardly ever cut these. So then it's like, I had to sideboard between these cards. You cut some English. So let's say, like, you basically only ever cut here. Like, these are the only cards that I could sideboard, really, I felt like. And there's some matchups where all of these are good. It, it was just, like, difficult, and then it made my deck too stop, too, like, locked in, I felt, and I couldn't sideboard with it. Six Sigma. If that, um, if that helps, let me know. CWS. So we're playing against Storm. 
I will keep my hand. My hand is very good against Storm. It is on the draw, which kind of sucks. Okay. So we're bobbling. 100% opt. Okay, uh, we got two of these. Even though these don't, these are the exact same thing. I would assume this is a hand with a lot of bears. So we're gonna draw an opt. I could just take this metamorphose. I could just take Baral to get Baral out of play because that's going to pave the road for my Liliana. Because this hand's not very good. The problem is I just know there's no way that he's going to actually play. There's no way he's going to play the Baral next turn. I could just take Grape Shot. But then I, I make it so that he has to time lock himself twice. The problem is I don't want him to sit there and not do anything and then handcuff me, you know? The Metamorphos was good when I played it. It was just struggled with the sideboarding. So I think I'm going to take Metamorphos. And if he's going to time lock himself twice... By not playing this Brawl, then I'm alright with it. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, we, I mean, we've, we've got him, and then we can just Inquisition. So, like... Now we've got him kind of in a pickle. There's not really a set of draws that really punish us. I think we're in pretty... Yeah. I think we're in a pretty good spot right now. His hand doesn't really do anything, and there's no one card that fixes his hand. Like, if he doesn't play Baral, okay, so now we just, now we probably just discard spell the Baral, honestly, to just make, to be more proactive. So he's drawing into a Gifts. Now I really want to, now I think I'm just going to Thought Seize the Baral. Because I want this out of my opponent's hand. And I can always just ditch this Abrupt Decay to this Liliana as a free discard. Because I just don't want to get into a point where he can just brawl into a turn with Gifts Ungiven. Wow, that's really good. It just makes my... It makes everything awkward. Because I want to dictate the pace here. If he's just going to tap out for Gifts Ungiven on 4, then like, I think I can beat that. What I don't think I can beat is, like, me getting handcuffed and then not having a turn where I can, um, me getting handcuffed and then not having a turn that's just not productive for me. So what is he going to do? I can take Grape Shot. And he's drawing gifts. Next turn, he plays land go. Then the turn after land go, I play Liliana and go up. If he draws a way to generate mana, then I'm dead. So I think this is just like the best thing to do is to just take this Brawl. Yeah. I think I'm just going to take this Brawl 
play this and pass, and then I can set up to hold on to this decay because I know that he's going to set he's going to do something that involves um, Spiral of Cow. because he's going to set up a, a gifts pile for sure that has some sort. I'm going to just get a. We're going to play. We're going to be traversing for Tarmogoyf this game. I think. I think I'm just going to protect my life total. Make it so that he really has to go off to kill me. And this gets... Okay. And then we tick up, probably Ditch Traverse. Yeah. That's what I got to. It, it, it didn't feel great, but... God, have my Twitch players been going off today? We should be able to squeeze him now. I'm going to ditch Traverse. Alternatively, I could ditch Death Shadow. To give me delirium. If I draw another land, I can traverse for a Tarmogoyf and have this. So yeah, I'm gonna ditch the Death Shadow. Yeah. Now I think that they should he should either main phase this or not do anything. Yeah. He either should main phase or wait another turn. Which is all fine. It's a pretty obvious... I think it's a pretty easy steam vents for him. It's just grape shot. Okay. All right. So he is going to go for the play around stubborn denial. Karma boy. That's like the best draw. So now... I just ditch my Traverse, play Goyf, and then stub his play. And then that's probably all she wrote. It's going to be difficult. I mean, providing a, a past in flames gets him out of it, but we've got Baral covered. We have Liliana. We have Inevitability. And we're going to have Stub turned on. This forces him to... He basically has... Like, we basically have... Um, gifts Ungiven covered for the rest of the game now. He, I know Caleb plays and one uh, unsubstantiate, but he's going off in like a really small base, and it's just going to get worse. I think I'm just going to do nothing with my Liliana. I would rather be able to, because, like, how do I lose? So I'm definitely attacking. We're not battle raging right now. How do I lose? He goes cost reducer. He goes gifts I'm given here into cost reducers. And the Liliana ultimate's not going to be that good, to tell you the truth. It's all it's going to do is just stone double stone rain, which in the late game doesn't matter. So I'm just going to keep both of these cards here. They're both good. Each one sort of shaves the clock the clock off a little bit. Forty three viewers. I hope everyone's having a good time. I appreciate you everybody showing up and hanging out. Hopefully we draw a dead card here. My card is dead. So let's go in and attack. God, I love this card so much. So 
he flooded out really bad. It's a really poor draw from him. All right. And we got it. Okay. So this matchup, I like. I know that he shaves a lot of cost reducers in this matchup. So I want to cut this. And he doesn't play Blood Moon. So I want to cut this. And then I want to cut some number of Fatal Pushes. I want my Radiant Flames. I want this. I want this. This and this. Well, Grixis, no, Grixis Death Shadow is like, they're both, in my opinion, they're both 1A and 1B. Like, I had this conversation earlier. Thoughtseize, Street Wraith, Death Shadow are better than, are all like the best, they're better than any 12 cards in any other deck in the format. I think I'm gonna board out one of these on the draw. I know Caleb cuts most, if not all, of his cost reducers. And we still have Brutality, Pulse, and Radiant Flames, and two Lilianas to keep to get rid of them, so. Yeah. Yeah, Grixis is like dead. I think. I think Jun Death Shadow is the best deck in the format. I thought that it was the best deck in the format even when... Well, I guess not when Grixis was good because J Grixis is good against Jund. But I've always thought in a normal metagame that re when it reacted to Grixis, I thought Jund was better because Jund just deals with bullshit better than Grixis does. Grixis is better against every Fatal Push deck than Jund does. Like, not close, way better. I think I'm going to keep this because we can go discard spell into Liliana with a redraw and this will find us our land. This is not great, but I think this is better than a random seven. Because basically, this is actual lay of the land. This is a threat later in the game. This is a redraw. This is kind of our bridge card. I think this is better than a random six. But I could be, you know, I could I could just be wrong and die. I think you wanna I would rank them five color, four color white, four color blue. Path is more. Oh, I can see that. He went top top, so this is going to get rough. All right, another discard spell is good. So let's scry. Bobble. We don't need bobble. So let's go get. We have to get overgrown tomb, even though we have four stubs in the deck. Okay. I need to slow him down. So he went top, top. So what did he keep? He kept one of those cards guaranteed 100% is an empty the wards. So I think I'm going to take Pyretic Ritual and then Thought Seize Inquisition again next. Because if, if one of those cards is an empty, which is the card that makes this hand, he just goes Ritual. Ritual, six goblins on two. So I think that there's a ritual on top of his deck. Because that makes that hand work. Dude, I... Okay, so Kevin Seer Visions. But I bet, I bet he drew into a... When top, top again, jeez. Radiant Flames is great. Also, that bobble hit was good. So there's got to be 
like show me I should have played my Bloodstain Mire to pump fake a Noxious Revival. Because that's what he's sitting here pausing with. I'm going to take pieces of the puzzle, probably. I need to get this Liliana online next turn. Past in Flames. What did he keep on top? He must have kept Past in Flames on top. Yeah, i got to take pieces of the puzzle, I think, now. God, playing in Storm is stressful. We're going to get this tapped. Because this is going to put us to 14, so then any shock land gets us good. And then this Liliana is just going to slowly eat at his hand. The rough part is, even if he, even if he goes nuts here with an empty, that he still... He's going to be able to reload because of the um, ritual. And we're going to get... Green, blue. Oh, that doesn't get green, blue. That's frustrating. <laughs> uh, give him some credit. The guy probably, guys probably knows what he's doing. That is a PT champ. So he gets a kind of a free discard here in Past in Flames. And we're just going for it here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he's good enough to play whatever he wants to play. So he discards Piff. I don't think I'm going to win this game. I might win this game. This feels like an end of turn ritual great ritual into uh, whatever it is. Gifts I'm given. I'm going to ditch one of these. Now, I'm going to actually ditch the traverse. Not going to show him this. The Traverse isn't doing anything. And now we have, like, if he mini gets us, then we can, like, we can we have it covered two ways. Giga Drowse. It's interesting. Does he know to the back cards for only good cards? Hey man. You never know. Well, I think we're we're doing okay now. That land's kind of kinda of rough. Whew. Big draw. All right, check this up. See if he discards anything that grows Tarmogoyf. That's a big draw. Yeah, that's basically like there's not enough there's not enough voice of resurgences around to justify anger of the gods. I definitely think I'm gonna play three veils in this deck. If I play this, when I, I, I'm leaning towards this five-color build. I'm going to try. I probably won't stream anymore after this league. I'll stream the four-color build tonight. I need to do some work and do some studying.
Yeah. Yeah, I don't like... There's just not enough going on, I don't think, to justify anger. And then we're not ulting this Liliana. It's just going to go up forever. Give me some of the stuff, man. Grimflare. Grimflare is a two of my white build. Yep. Alright, we're going to let that go. We're just Delver. We're a Delver deck. Oh. And I've said it, I said this in my article that I wrote. This five color shadow deck is the best deck in the format against combo decks. If you would expect a degenerate meta, this this deck just is insane against combo decks. Like, it's just like some of the most lopsided magic there is. That's totally like. I, I don't blame you, Sky. If that's if that's what your plan is, then like, good for you, man. Like that's totally legit. But I think that the I think the juice is worth the squeeze. I'm also just kind of like into like accepting that I need to get lucky. I think I'm just gonna discard. This inqui so what do I want to do? I could inquisition let me inquisition him then make a decision. So let's see what this is. Because I easily could just inquisition him, see that he has Jack, and then ult this Liliana. E E. I think now I'm comfortable discarding my Radiant Flames. I think that we've just got him almost locked out. I don't want to ult my Liliana because it's just not worth double stone writing him, I think. I think it's just going to be worth it to just get him to play off the top. And we've got like, we've got the first spell that matters. We've got it covered. Yeah. I, I agree. I think that I agree, Osh. I think all these Death Shadow decks are like 1A, 1B, and 1C when it comes to playing against combo decks. I just think this one is the best one. This one is the one that, like, you've got thought, you've eight discard spells, you've four counter spells after combat, after, after, um, sideboard, and you have Death Shadow and Tarmogoyf. I agree with that. Okay, so what is this? I think we're just gonna... I think this is a bait, but this easily... that He easily could have an empty the warns. All right. Yo, we're playing for it. We're playing for that 5-0 hype. Right there, it's a roan, man. Let's see if we can 5-0 it. Yeah, you know, like, Scott, like, you're not wrong. You're 100% not wrong. Yeah, Osh, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like, you have more staying power, which I understand. So my flex slots are currently this and this to make it a fourth push. Or I could cut one decay, but I'm not sure. Like, I get that they're both like, like Death Shadow decks are the best Thoughtseize decks, and Thoughtseize is good against combo. I just think that, like, this version is the best one against combo decks. But, like, you're really explaining, it's like, who do you want as your quarterback, Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? Does it matter? Not really.
You got it again. All right, heater. This hand's good against humans. This hand's good. We want to see, like, noble hierarchy from our opponent. The Eagles won. Oh, that was such a great... Like, I'm a Patriots fan, and that was such a great game that I can't really be mad, you know? Like, yeah, we don't want that. Well, yeah, I mean, the my brother lives in Philadelphia. Like, that's just a society of idiots. It's a great game. Hard to be hard, hard to be angry either way. But Joku Bog, what the fuck? Tilt. I'm gonna play this tapped. If this is like Abzan Traverse, I might cry. That's oh, an amulet. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. I decided to play conservatively. I didn't think about amulet. Don't punish me. I'm going to fatal push this because I can get Azusa with this member. Let's get this off the battlefield. I have not played against this amulet deck in a while. What sucks is that my Tarma wife is so wee. E E. What do I E? I probably just play Liliana. E E for one. Uh, I think we're gonna get on the Liliana train. Now, I'm going to go Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf, hold up Dismember. Look at Dismember and Azusa, and then just start going up with Liliana. Explore is bad. I don't think I'm going to win this game. Because now he just bogs himself. I should have played Liliana. That was stupid. Very stupid. Very stupid on my own part, which is just like a little bit of not knowing how this deck like operates. So I'm gonna take up Ditch Traverse. Then I'm gonna shock myself here because if my opponent plays a Summoner's Pact, I can stub it, which makes it so that he or she can't uh, play Titan for two turns. Like, I can effectively double time walk them. And I might find a discard spell in time for that. Rule Turf. Picks up Bajoku Bog. Which makes me want to puke. Now, keep this dismember. I guess I should get rid of the dismember now. Pact and negation. Probably should ditch. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. My graveyard or his graveyard is going to be empty after this turn. Damn, push and decay this turn. Oh, God. There it is, prime time. Well, the nice thing about this is that I can dismember, because he's going to play a Colony Hard Expedition to fight around this Liliana. I can dismember it and then 
Yeah, so he bounces. He doesn't play to land off in this turn, actually, so he can play double Colony Heart. Yeah, that sucks. Prime Eagle Titan. I think I played this. I think I played this like a jackass. If we're going to be completely above the rim here, I'm going to go with this is my fault. I think we're going to play defense. Nice thing is, I guess not. I guess he'll just bog me. If he attacks with this Titan, I can at least in combat shrink it and then just eat it and still ult this Liliana. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. Wise words, it is always your fault, you are the pilot. The problem with this is there's just gonna be like so many titans. Just titans everywhere. We're gonna do this now and see if this resolves. Because if it doesn't resolve, I don't want to walk. All right, now I'll walk. This is going to be one hell of a Liliana split. Let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, or two, four, six, seven, eight. So this just gets another Titan. Is there any point? Two, four, six, eight, nine. <clears throat> so Titan still casts it. So it doesn't matter. Primal Titan. We don't just lose. Like, I can... Well, I guess he just... But yeah, it would have been nice if we would had one more point there. Could have been just one bigger, but... I just have to figure out... What I can do is I can set up a pretty interesting um, split here where I put, like... I separate bounce lands that make it so he doesn't die. Okay, so now he's got enough bounce lands. Well, he's going to be able, no matter what, he's going to be able to here. Returns to Laria West. Simic Growth Chamber. Walking blister for one. That sucks. That walking blister is going to get us. So I need to draw. I do not know what I can draw at this point. Gross. Concede. All right, there's no way I could set it to where he could keep it. So two, four... Titan attacks, block. He has just two lands in place, so it's not like I can go thoughts he's a spell. I might as well just make sure they're two lands. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the ballista, like I could have I could have definitely set something up here. 
That's unfortunate. I think I could. I think I had the tools to win that game. I know. I probably. I don't know if it would have mattered to. Uh, what do I want? What do I want to say? I don't know if, like, obviously, if I would have had the abrupt decay on two, I probably could have done something. I could have played Tarn away for turn earlier. So I want these. I don't really want grudges. I could just cut... I could just cut all my removal on the play and bring in some more removal on the draw in order to deal with that stupid scout. You want Radiant Flames and Pulse because of the dumb Hornet Queen and those other tokens? But we're looking to just team or battle rage them out of this game. Hostage taker for Amulet Titan. <laughs> I think I'm looking to discard spell before Azusa. That's why on the draw, I would bring in more removal. But on the play, I'm looking to cover those two. Maybe I don't want this fourth stub. So I think I want all of these. Decays of double duty. You probably cut one. Tr that makes a lot of sense. Mr. Bounce Land. Probably have Relic. Is a Collective Brutality or Ancient Grudge better? I can see Brutality being pretty good because it hits the Scout. Maybe I want to cut two Traverses. Pulse kills Titan and all the tokens. I'm going to sideboard drastically different on the draw. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be some super jivey sideboard. I don't know. I'll probably have to cut my Liliana's on the draw. All right. So, Blood Crypt off Catacombs, Watery, or Breeding Pool off this. Though that kind of fucks my mana up. I think I'm actually going to go get Overgrown Tomb Watery Grave so I can deal with all my double black spells, and I'll look to try to get one later in the game, a red source, once I have a threat. Start off with this. Get that relic out of my face. The the insanity. Grove of the burn willows. Alright. One time. Land one time. Yeah, I tried the Metamorphose, and I just didn't like it. It messed with my mana base too much. It messed with my sideboarding too much. All right, we just want to land. Give me a land off the top. Bajokabog. Bajokabog. Not going to fetch, because I just... Even though it's marginal, but I do want to, like, hit a land drop. Come on. Damn it. Okay. Land drop there would have been sick. This game is going to be... We're already in a point of this game where it's going to get difficult to win. Where the 5-0 is leaving us. They're probably going to Vesuva. They could Vesuva copy their Grove and then be like, leave us the only way to win is like Tarwaif, pretty much. So this transmutes. So I'm probably just gonna get breeding pool. Did play this. He can transmute for like 
a he can transmute for engineered explosives, but I can decay it. And this allows me to like if I get a traver traverse for Tarmogoyf. There's a Teleri West. So he didn't transmute. Maybe you just got Thrag Tusks for days. Or is this a Bayloth? Ballista. That's okay. Because now... Now we just Abrupt Decay this. It's like, at Chopa, it doesn't really matter. Like, I just decided to do it there because it's so mar- Like, if your life total doesn't matter and you don't have benefits from shuffling, you should always do it. My life total didn't matter. Let's see what this is, see if I want to. Tireless tracker. Okay, so we're definitely, I think we're ditching up, taking rid of the stub. Could have discarded Bobble, but I think I wanted to. I think I want to just find more action. Traverse is like almost action. So here comes the tracker. Because now I can decay the tracker and go up, get my opponent's last card, which is probably what I'm going to do. This probably copies. Yeah, and then we'll just ditch our traverse. God, they do a good job of harassing my graveyard. Okay, so that gives us a red land, which is probably... Honestly, getting a red land out of my deck is probably worth more than Lay of the Land. Especially considering this doesn't do anything. Though I'm one two ways. I'm two. I'm halfway, halfway to Delirium. The red land doesn't do anything. So I think I'm just going to go up, actually. I think I'm just going to ditch this land here. Because this is going to put me halfway to Delirium. They ditched a Hornet Queen, which is good for the home team. I think they only play one of those. So it's kind of like, who finds... Okay. All right. All right, that finds me a Tarmogoyf. So let's just discard spell our opponent. Make them Edict. Oh, I could have gone up. I could have gone up. Would that have been better? The problem is if they go up, and they hit enough land drops next turn. Because one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I definitely should have gone. Well, no, because, like, the problem is this tribe scout. So, like, my whole idea about the tribe scout was that if I. Like, in my, I didn't internalize this, but in my head, I was like, the tribe scout turns bounce land into Titan, into a Titan. And the. Uh, and by going down, they would have to draw untapped land into Titan in order to do it. So the problem, well, like, so that's what I was doing in my head. I just didn't do it because it, this, like, by having the tribe scout off the draw, it limits his draws. All right, well, we got that covered. Let me see what they're drawing. Ancient Stirrings. 
I think that what would this be? That they wouldn't play. It's got to be like a Titan. But that was my idea there. I didn't want because leaving the tribe scout in play means that a untapped land or untapped land or tap land or bounce land Titan works and um, bounce land Titan works and then whatever. I'm trying to communicate my thoughts here because it's complicated. Bounce land Titan or untapped land Titan works. You just cut it by that much, which I don't know if it's worth it. I didn't have delirium there, skinny. And I do know how traverse works. All right, let's not, let's not, you know, let's take it easy here. If they stir, they could get EE. Yes. Yeah, I think this is just like the adult decision. Even though I, I swear to God, I think this is, I think this is a, um, this just has to be. This has got to be a primeval titan in their in their hand here. It's an Azusa. Okay, that makes sense. So they revealed they found a forest, which is. Pretty much the the best hit for us. They probably should crack it right now. So they can cast Primeval Titan. They're going to get two looks at Titan or two looks at... They get two looks at Titan, or they get two looks at uh, Summoner's Pact. It's not. It's not like we're not in a great position either way. I hate playing against this deck. It's just like I, I, I don't like playing against this deck because it's hard to play. Okay, redraw. At least it's not redrawn to Titan. Ballista would kind of suck. It's, it's difficult playing against this deck because you just... Oh, man. Okay, so they Growth Chamber. A... They can play an additional land, too, so then it doesn't... Like, nothing gets out of it. We're definitely going to attack with our Tarmogoy first, so that they can't, um, like, attack with Goyf then plus, because we want to be able to get five damage in. Right, we are definitely struggling when it comes to drawing non-lands, but such is life. We even traverse. All right. Um. Tick up. Ditch this. And I'll leave this last card in my hand. You should. You gotta crack this now. Right. I feel like we're fighting the good fight, but we're just spinning our wheels. Yeah, we're just like going nuts. That just picks up a bog, which continues to get me. At least his Hornet Queen's gone. All right, Street Wraith. It is your time to shine, my friend. Yeah, it is Street Wraith's time to shine. This is Beats by Wraith.
the man, the myth, the legend, the street wraith, getting in there. So he ditched a forest. That's not, yeah, that is what he returned, actually. This is Death Shadow on hard mode. There's no other way about it. Dude, we are clawing for this one. Flash. What do you get? You probably just pick up the Suva. I hope I just find nothing but Street Wraith. So it's literally Street Wraith's just my actual best threat. Returns Vizuva. Yeah, dude. Nug him. Get out of my face. God, this Street Wraith. I personally guess. So we knew about that Vesuva. What would you... God, I just want to... All I want to do is team or battle rage a Street Wraith. God damn it. Oh, that does it, boys. That does it. That does it. Oh, God. Bring it home. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, my God. My opponent was like, GG. And I was like, it was a weird one. God, dude. Street Wraith. My man. All right. So now we have to board differently because we just... We cannot... We need more removal in our deck after sideboard, I think. I think we need to bring in these and these. There's a chance that this is too slow. Okay. Brutality is brutality's probably too slow on the draw. Especially if I'm bringing in more removal to deal with. If I'm bringing in more removal to deal with uh, whatever it is. The stupid Sakura Tribe Scout. Then I probably can just clean switch my brutality. I think this is what we got to do here. I just want more ways to mess with the whatever it is, the one, two. No, it's not, Mammoth. Radiant Flames cleans up Hornet Queen. Which we just can't beat. It cleans up Horn Hornet Queen, and it cleans up all the stupid Colony Garden tokens. As well as killing, you know, the other, the other mana dudes in a pinch. All right. I think this is what we're doing. One more. One more for the 5 0. One more. I think Flames is better than Pulse? Question mark? I think. Because it also, that also kills the 2 2. But, like, I'm not going to say that with any, like, I, I'm not exactly going to say that with a lot of excitement.
Come on, for the 5 0. Come on. Pulse does. Yeah, maybe it was right to keep the pulse in and then ditch, like, because I want radiant flames also. The problem is, if, if I don't kill a amulet by the time that Maelstrom Pulse would matter, I'm losing anyways. Yeah, I mean, this is... Like, you can't mulligan this hand. Alright, that's a good start for the home team. Oh, that's another good start for the home team. Ancient stirrings on top. All right, double prime time. All right, this is beatable. This is beatable. We get our Tarmogoyf in play. Here we go. One more land. We need a land. All right, that's not bad. That's not bad. All right, ancient stirrings. You got it. His hand is dick. Excuse my language. I'm just like, God damn it, he hit a relic. We can't win anymore. He hit a relic. Oh, that's so sad. I'm actually just going to decay this. I'm not proud of doing that, but I do think it's most of the time the right thing to do. Summoner's Pact? That's bad, because now he Summoner's Pact for Azusa. Or not. I want to hit a land, so that I can take that Summoner's Pact. Show me a land. Okay. So now... We get rid of the Summoner's Pact. I don't understand why he didn't just pact for Azusa. Does he not have Azusa in his deck? Oh, now we're firing on all cylinders. We're firing. How does he die? He plays more lands, right? Am I crazy? I've definitely been crazy. So now we just attack, traverse for a Death Shadow, play Death Shadow Tarmogoyf. Right, so this is traverse. Get our non-black land. We fetch for Watery Grave. Oh, man. Oh, man, are we doing it? Are we doing it? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Then I think I actually kill him next turn. Because he blocks Shadow... 116. Yeah, we just kill him next turn. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on. 28 lands, only draw four. Yeah. Oh, baby. What could he have? How does he kill me? That's going to let me know. I think this is irrelevant, but it's at least going to give me some information. Oh, baby. Oh, baby.
the dream. We did it. We did it, chat. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Go team. So I guess I really liked, I mean, this deck, I mean, like, it's hard to, you know, get too far into it, but I mean, obviously the deck performed. Did I accidentally throw one of these in here? Yeah. Deck performed, which is, you know, what we're all about. I guess the last thing, so I'm gonna be back tonight to play the white version. But I guess I was gonna make move forward and make changes to this deck. I would between this, the between these two cards here, between these three, the only changes I would make is find another fatal push. But I don't even know if that's even worth it. So Yeah, we got the full four squirrels because we uh Dude, we're definitely going to open some freaking chests. All right, we're not that kind of a loser. All right, I open chests. I'm going to open like four of them. All right. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see, we got 42 new items. We got 40 play points. What value? That chest is a winner. I have three there, Scott. I don't think this card's worth anything. So that we're gonna call that one a loser. We're gonna call this one a loser. Last one. <laughs> Come on. No, oh, Blooming Marsh, Endbringer, that's probably a winner. Okay. Nothing. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out today. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. Um, I'll be on again tonight to play the white version after this. But for now, that's all you got for me. Um, I'll see all of you guys uh, tonight, hopefully. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and take it easy.